हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू सी एनालिसिस ऑन अ वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग प्रॉब्लम ऑफ इंस्टाकार्ट मार्केट बास्केट एनालिसिस सो व्हाट इज इंस्टाकार्ट इंस्टाकार्ट इज जस्ट लाइक बिग बास्केट एंड ग्रोफर्स इन इंडिया सो दे डिलीवर ग्रोसरीज ऑनलाइन राइट सो दे हैव अ डिलीवरी ऐप वेयर पीपल कैन बाय ग्रोसरीज वेजिटेबल्स फ्रूट्स एंड अदर हाउस होल्ड थिंग्स एंड दे विल डिलीवर इट टू योर डोर सो दिस इज इंस्टाकार्ट Now, what is the problem? The problem is about which products will an Instacart consumer purchase again. So now they want to predict based on their previous orders what will be their next order. So now recently, Instacart open sourced this data. See their blog post on three million. So they have written a blog also which explains the problem. And this is not a recent problem. This problem is this is an old problem. Okay. So Instacart is challenging the Kaggle community with the with their data set. now let's see what is the data so you got the problem their problem is to predict what will be the items that will be in a user's next order or a customer's next order let's see their data so in their data they have many different files so first file that is written here is ils.csv so they have around 6 7 files here and we will see all the different data files that they have provided and what is the content in that file so now that first is il.csv so il is they have il id and il so for example il id 1 refers to prepared soups and salads il id 2 refers to specialty cheese and 3 refers to granola bars so these are the i based on il ids they have the il names right this is the first file then second file is composed of departments where it is at the department level so department 1 refers to the frozen items 2 2 two, two refers to others 3 refers to bakery items and so on then we have order products which has the order information of the product which order id holds what product ids and add to cart order add to cart order is like in what rank the order uh, in what rank the product has been added to the cart for example if i instead my first add to cart is like let's say milk or cheese right that will become the one if i on third number i add let's say some fruit let's say mangoes then that will become my three here so then reordered whether this product this particular product is a reordered product reordered means has been added previously or not or if that is one that means it is a reordered zero it means not a reordered so let's let's simply jump into the code notebook where we are doing the analytics why because these all things other information we will see in the notebook itself so this is a very interesting notebook written by sudalai rajkumar and i came across this notebook and i thought like this one notebook holds a lot of good analytics that can be used for the educational purpose so here we have around 2 lakh instacart users so the data that they have open source is around 2 lakh instacart users uh, data now for each user 4 to 100 of their orders are given means that uh, for example for each user uh, minimum 4 orders will be present and a maximum of 100 orders will be present so here simple importing of uh, modules is done and uh, these are the input files that we have the data files and this is the we have loaded this here in the variables right and now we have orders under underscore df right this one data frame let's see what it is so here we have order id user id eval set order number right order day of the week for example if it is 2 that me uh, it is from 0 to 6 or 1 to 7 something like that so that means because they have not exposed the exact day like tuesday or wednesday but they have encoded it in in terms of numbers so two probably might be tuesday or wednesday right if starting from sunday or like that now hour of the day right which hour of the day from 0 to 24 8 means 8 am right then 15 means 3 pm like that and then days since prior order which means that number of days have passed between the two orders right so and you can see here for one user id user id 1 this is his first order right order number 1 and that's why day is prior order is not available but when the order number 2 for user id 1 was there means second order so it happens after 15 days 
that's why it is filled up as 15 and not empty so this is just a basic understanding of this one particular uh, file here or the data frame here then we have order products prior df so this another file okay that holds the information of order id which means the order id then we have product id so what in what order id what were the products that was added so in order id 2 you have all these products added right now add to card order i explained right because if it is one that means this particular product id was the first product that has been added to cart in that in that order id 2 and then reordered means it has been reordered earlier also so in uh, in this particular data frame it is almost similar the columns are similar but uh, it holds the prior and it holds the training data set so i will explain what is prior and training let's not go into that because this is particularly for analytics and the prior train and test is for the training of the machine learning models so let's see what is prior and the eval set all this what is the eval set type right so prior order are the previous orders okay the historic orders then they have train and test so the train on which you will train the data right and the test on which you will give the future predictions like what will be the next orders or what will be the next uh, items in their order for these customers so this is for the purpose of uh, building models now let's go into the analysis right so you can see this graph where we have maximum order number of four so minimum order information is four 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 orders will be there for a customer and maximum is 100 there are few customers who have even 100 orders on this app okay now the next thing is to see is the frequency of order by weekday so this has been plot between 0 to 6 and if you see this histogram you will see that on day 0 and day 1 it is a little bit higher as compared to the other days so we can assume that these days are probably sundays or saturdays right because people are free and they have enough time to do this uh, shopping grocery shopping so that is why that we can assume but it, it is not sure right but it's just for the analytics sake now frequency of ordering by hour of the day here you will see that from 0 to 7 right uh, f uh, like night and the early morning their order numbers are not high but as the day begins from 9 to 16 which means 9 to 4 the order frequency is the maximum and then it starts to decrease down so this is the basic histogram that has been plot on the order hour of the day okay and that was there in the data orders data now what has been done is there's a uh, heat map now what has been done is there's a heat map that is being plotted here between the order day of the week and order hour of the day so this will get to us for the 24 hours right and the seven days and here you can see that the darkest blocks right the darkest block the darkest blocks are the most active blocks that means the most orders were placed in that and you can see in day 0 and day 1 between 13 14 and 15 16 it is the most dark right that means the most orders were placed in this specific time frame right and this is very interesting to see such an analytics and such an heat map like that right because mostly we see correlation heat maps but this is also again a very interesting heat map now you can see the frequency distribution by days since prior order so you can see there's a sudden hike on seven that means most people are there who are ordering after every seven days or you can say after every week some have frequency most have frequency like that now you can see then again a little spike is there on the 14 which means that most some have frequency of ordering after every two weeks and similarly after every th three weeks a little bit spike here and a lot of people most of the people order once in 30 days probably at first of each month something like that okay so this is again a very interesting analytics to see now we will see some of the other interesting analytics so here the percentage of reorders in prior set is being find out okay this is just a simple calculation like how many reorders were there in the prior set 
how many reorders were there in the train set so mostly it is almost same 58 59 percent now we have seen that 59 percent of the products are reordered now there will be situations when none of the products are reordered so we can also check that and uh, so here we found out that 12 percent products in the prior order does not or are not reordered items while in the train it is 6.5 percent okay so let's see this analytics of the number of products in given order so number of products in given order starts with one and a lot of people are there who are ordering just one product but then it the maximum goes till four four or five so on an average if you see here the central tendency you will see that an order will contain at least four or five orders or four or five six orders something like that from three to six orders then it began to decline and then it keeps on declining till and someone even has ordered 80 products in one single order maximum was at five okay so this again simple histogram has been plot, plotted here but very interesting to see how these histograms can be used to visualize different different inferences from the data now we have products data frame where we have product id and with that product name so these are the things that are there in the instacart that they provide chocolates salt uh, sweetened oolong tea green chili sauce things like that and with that every product id will come under some il id and that il id will come under a bigger level which is department id that is the bigger category right and then we saw it already uh, il id and the il department id and the departments right now let's see some other analysis so this one notebook here is being merged and one data frame has been created here so if you say here we have order id product id right with that product id we have the product name then with regards to product name we have il id department id then we have il name and the department name so organic egg whites are coming under il eggs and the department level is dairy eggs so that is the level of information that they have provided in the all the different different files that we have merged here so in this cell you will see the frequency count and the product name so bananas have the most frequency to be ordered then we have again organic bananas then strawberries spinach avocados then all the other items but you can see bananas are on a very high frequency count then next thing is with regards to the aisle so you will see the fresh fruits and the fresh vegetables has the most frequency of ordering or the most ordered aisles are from fresh fruits and fresh vegetables and in india also if you see big basket or grofers mostly people use these grocery delivering apps for fruits and vegetables only right so then comes vegetable packaged vegetables and then yogurt and then dairy products but if you see on the last you will see fresh herbs or baby food formula these are almost like very few people that are ordering these products now at the department level distribution here we have a pie chart and you will see produce and dairy eggs has the most area which means they are the most ordered departments so in produce you have like wheat cereals rice all those things that comes out from the farming then we have dairy eggs that means poultry then we have all the other uh, all the other departments that are snacks beverages and frozen and pantry then very small small portion is occupied by household items personal care items and the baby's items so now we have the department wise reorder ratio and in this you will see that the dairy eggs has the highest reordering ratio so people who are ordering eggs they then they are ordering eggs like most of the time when they are ordering again so it's a, it has the highest reorder ratio of even more than 0.65 around 0.7 something like that okay so you can it is wise to say that in almost 
टेन रीऑर्डर्स सेवन ऑर्डर्स कंटेन एग्स वाइल रीऑर्डरिंग इफ दैट एग इज प्रेजेंट इन द प्रीवियस ऑर्डर ऑल्सो राइट देन यू हैव बेवरेजेस राइट एंड देन यू हैव प्रोड्यूस सो प्रोड्यूस ऑल्सो हैव अ लॉट ऑफ रीऑर्डर्स देन द लीस्ट रीऑर्डर्स कम फ्रॉम द पर्सनल केयर आइटम्स पेंट्री आइटम्स एंड द सम इंटरनेशनल वट इज दिस इंटरनेशनल और हाउस होल्ड आइटम्स लाइक दैट नाउ नेक्स्ट वी हैव इज एड टू कार्ट रीऑर्डर रेशियो एंड हेयर यू विल सी दैट मैक्सिमम रीऑर्डर रेशियो ऑफ द आइटम इज नंबर वन सो द आइटम दैट इज एड टू कार्ट इन द नंबर फर्स्ट प्लेस दैट हैज द हाइएस्ट रीऑर्डर रेशियो एंड द सेकेंड आइटम सो दीज टू आइटम्स मोस्टली दैट द पीपल आर एडिंग इन द कार्ट इन द फर्स्ट और सेकेंड प्लेस those items has the highest reorder ratio and then reorder ratio starts to decline as the add to cart order position increases in number and we have a uh, some irregular spikes here that we can see so this makes sense also like what we order most frequently we purchase it in the very initial first go when we open the app simple patterns of how people interact with the uh, buying and purchasing on the grocery apps right then we have time based variables here you will see that the reorder ratio across the week is more or less same so reorder ratio has nothing much to do with the day of the week okay and uh, then we have reorder ratio across hour of the day so now it's interesting to see that on like around 6 7 8 you will see that uh, reorder ratio for certain items is high as compared to the all the other hours and somehow we can conclude that maybe there are certain items that uh, their demand is very high and in this and we can conclude that like bread butter all these things their most people need these things in the morning right so that's why maybe some items like that they ha- that require at particular hour of the day so people have that in mind and they order them so it's very vague to say that but yeah maybe you can put in comments what is your conclusion on this analytics but yeah so this was just a simple exploration notebook on instacart market basket data right so what i would suggest at the end of the video is you also go through this notebook uh, this notebook is present on kegel it is by the sudhalai rajkumar and there are similar interesting notebooks by other people go through them and this one problem if you start from different different perspective something new will come and then try to come out with your own approach with your own contribution to what has been done already in this data set right then you can move on to the machine learning part but before moving to that there's a lot to analyze there in the data as far as the analysis is concerned so that's it from my end before we end this video please don't forget to subscribe and like this video see you in the next one